So you have a translucent 64, but that's not cool enough, so let's make it light up. Stay tuned. Let's start off by gathering the tools you will need. First, you will need your soldering setup, wire strippers slash clippers, a pair of scissors, assorted Phillips head screwdrivers, the special Nintendo security bit screwdriver. These are easily found with Google. Assorted wire. I'm using 22 gauge in both green and black. If you plan on doing it exactly the way I do, you will need electrical tape, not the cheap stuff. Get the good brand. I'm using Polykin an X-Acto knife, and some LED strip. Mine is an RGB strip, but I only plan on using the green from it. Also, the size is 50-50. If you plan on going your own way, I still recommend some electrical tape, some LEDs, your choice on size and color, and some resistors. I always use 470 ohm 1 4th watt. To the 64, remove the expansion cover and the jump pack. Flip it over and remove the six screws. These are the security ones, and they're the only security ones. Once those are off, remove the top and set it aside. Now that you're inside, you're greeted with 28 screws, or at least I was. Yours might have 30. Either way, they're all Phillips head and a bunch of different sizes that you will need to keep organized. The way I do it is to set them off to the side by doing my best to mimic where they came from. Be careful though, because a cat or a nice bump of the table could ruin your day. Now you should be able to remove the motherboard. Carefully flip it over. Mine stay together for the most part, yours may not. Remove the bottom cover. We will be focusing on where we will be pulling our 12 volt source from, or our positive wire. The pin is marked with a 7, so go ahead and attach your positive source wire to that pin. If you need to, I recommend attaching your resistor directly to the pin, then the wire. I don't need to, the LED strips I'm using have resistors built in. Now let's focus on where we will be attaching our ground wire. The pin is marked with a 4, Technically, either 1 or 4 can be used, as they are both grounds, but just use pin 4. Go ahead and attach your ground wire. Also, cover your connections with a piece of electrical tape. This is probably unnecessary, but I'm being extra cautious this time around. Then, replace your bottom cover. So this is how I decide to mount my strips. I did mount three of them directly to a heatsink, which isn't something you would want to do on anything else but I don't think it will get hot enough to make them fall off. Your results may vary. Anyways, on the same note of being extra cautious, I put down electrical tape before the strips. You wouldn't want to accidentally short your 12 volts to the heat sinks. I trimmed the pieces of tape to fit with an X-Acto knife, again, using quality tape so that it stays stuck to the heat sinks rather than falls off in a few hours. Okay, so I have no desire to change the power LED, but if you do, here's the pin out. The right way to do it would be to desolder the LED and replace it. I measured 1.9 volts going through the LED, so a resistor shouldn't be necessary, but don't hold me to that. If there is enough want, I will also LED mod a standard gray 64 and will give you a for sure answer. Well, that's that. Put your console back together, and if you didn't short anything out, you'll be left with a 100 times cooler than your friend's Nintendo 64. Thanks for watching. If this helped you, please leave a like and subscribe for more modding goodness. You can follow me on Twitter at TechnoOnTop for channel updates, news, and just what I'm working on. Now, some of you may have noticed my last video was deleted. I felt like it was missing some key information, so I will be adding to it and re-uploading. It may end up being a completely different video with the same subject. I'm not quite sure yet. Anyways, thanks for your support. Until next time, peace.